sorry. Welcome to worship at Lutheran Church of the Resurrection. We are gathered by Christ, growing in faith, sent to serve, and empowered to witness. Our faith community welcomes all individuals, regardless of race, sex, gender identification, sexual orientation, economic status, age, disability, or family makeup. Child of God, you are welcome here. All right, everybody hear me? Yes. I'm probably going to hear me about this. All right, a couple of announcements. One, the reason why you see me here, and I'm going to be pecking away at the keyboard, um, is because Betty fell last night. She broke her nose, and she has some other scrapes and some bruises. So there is a card out in the Narthex for Scott Nelson, but I picked up a card on the way for Betty. So there's two cards, one on each table, so please make sure you sign both cards. Also, we were a miss, I was a miss last time when Pastor Weissman was here to introduce you to our new bridge pastor. So I would like to welcome our new bridge pastor, Pastor Weissman. Thank you very much for being here. And again, I'm going to apologize for any misplaying. Huh? Oh yeah, and we also have changes in the hymns. So when it's that time to change hymns, we will let you know. We, we pick some easier hymns. Um, are there any prayer requests this morning? Bob. Happy birthday, Carla. <laughs> yes, Lois. For a list of cancer um, patients, um, other prayers. We uh, pray for Betty um, for healing. In hospice. So for Robin's father-in-law, who is in hospice, others? For safe travels over the holiday. Fourth of July is coming up, a lot of people traveling. So safe travels for all those that are traveling. Any Thanksgivings this morning? I will give a Thanksgiving. Last weekend, we threw my mother-in-law a 90th birthday bash. So we wish Peggy Varga a happy 90. Um, any others? Seeing none? Esther? <coughs> Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This time I'll ask uh, well, Howard Spencer, Paula Oklahoma Wilder, and Nellie Plummer to please come forward. And then I'm going to ask any other members of the Stevens ministry to come forward. Back a little bit. Very funny. Howard and Valda. Howard and Valda, 
you have been equipped to serve as a Stephen minister at the Lutheran Church of the Resurrection. Listen now to these words of Scripture. Praise be to God the Father and and our Lord, I'm sorry. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort others, comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for men since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ who you are serving. Each of you has been comforted by God with the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection for all, for us all. We ask you now to join in serving our Lord and those in our congregation and community who need to be comforted. As Jesus was responding to your needs, we ask you to be responsive to the needs of others. As Jesus took the burdens of the world on his shoulders and has been a friend to you in troubled times, we ask you to care for those who are burdened and troubled. As Jesus patiently listens when you turn to him, we ask you to be a patient listener to it in a hurried world. As Jesus has broken down the barriers that separated you from God, we ask you to heal the visions wherever you find them and trust in God to make people whole. As the Spirit of Christ has given you gifts for service, we ask you to use your skills, talents, and prayers to help those people you serve. As Jesus has shown his care to you, we ask you to help this congregation grow as a caring community through your own caring ministry. As Jesus has revealed his presence to you through faith, we ask you to share your personal experiences of faith with those around you so that they too may celebrate the presence of Christ in our world today. Now, are you prepared to meet those requests that we ask of you? If so, respond yes with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Are you prepared to nurture the skills you have learned and use them in service to others to support, encourage, build up, and comfort people in their needs? Yes, with the help of God. Are you prepared to serve as Stephen ministers at LCR? Yes, with the help of God. Every Christian is called to care for others, and our Stephen's ministry is a powerful way to live out that care. Today we recognize our newest Stephen's ministry leader, Nellie. And now I'm not going to invite you to step up. You're already here. Nellie. You have been trained as at a Stephen Ministry Bridge Leaders Training Course and have been asked to serve as a Stephen Leader at LCR. You are a gift from God, helping lead this ministry of equipping and caring. Will you assume this ministry in confidence that it comes from God? If so, respond yes with the help of God. Yes with the help of God. Will you nurture the skills you have learned and use them in service to others to support, encourage, and build up people and to enable excellent care while trusting in God's healing? Yes, with the help of God. Members of LCR, will you open your hearts to the ministry of this Stephen leader and pray for her in our service? If so, answer yes with the help of God. Yes. Now we ask you, members of the Lutheran Church of the Resurrection, to open your hearts to the ministry of all of these people and to pray for them, that they may be effective servants of Christ. Are you prepared 
to meet this request? If so, answer, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Will you accept their ministry when you need help and allow these individuals to work with you as you face struggles in your life that you might receive support and help from your Christian brothers and sisters? Yes, yes. yes with the help of God. And now, sister and sisters and brother, as you begin your new service for the Lord, we offer these blessings. May the Lord Jesus, who has graciously called you his disciple, now strengthen you by his spirit for your ministry in and to his work, world. As God has loved us in Jesus the Christ, May God bless you as you share with others the love you have received from God. May the Spirit dwell in you richly, filling you with joy and peace and courage for all your endeavors in the Lord's service. And may the God of all peace keep you sound in body, mind, and spirit, and strengthen you for the ministry to which you have been called. Because you have promised faithfully to serve the Lord Jesus and his people as Stephen ministers and leader, I commend you to the care and guidance of the Holy Spirit as you in turn care for others. Work hard. Use the skills you have learned, drawing on the gifts and talents the Spirit of God has given you so that you might be a blessing to the people you meet and care for. Continue to study. Reflect upon the situations you encounter. Pray for the people whose lives you are privileged to share. Be free to share your own needs with others so that you might receive the same kind of care and love you offer others. Act boldly and without fear, for Christ is with you. And may the God of peace sanctify you wholly. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For God, we ask you to take Nellie, Howard, and Bola into your care. You have blessed them with gifts and talents and have provided them with an opportunity to learn more about helping people. May they serve you with the power of the Holy Spirit. May they be quick to serve, patient in listening, listening, willing to share themselves with people. Give to us thankful hearts for them and show them in times of stress and satisfaction a special measure of your mercy and joy. Keep them strong in the faith and that you have given them for the sake of Jesus who cares for all of us in every way forever. Amen. Okay, thank you. Thank you all for coming up. And now you get to see some of your Stephen ministers.
moment of uh, lecture privilege. On behalf of all of the Stevens ministers, I wish to thank the congregation for your prayers and support. In each pew in front of you is a card that will give you guidance and a method for request should you need any services from Stevens ministry. Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty God and merciful, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading from Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth. To sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it. To put one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope. To give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults. For the Lord will never reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not will or afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. The second reading comes from 2 Corinthians. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you. So we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous acts of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for you, in order that there may be a fair balance. That is written, the one who has much did not have too much. And the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the fifth chapter. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet, and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed on into him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians, 
and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I would be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her daughter, Your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But after hearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not be afraid. Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put all of them outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, to let them come, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May be seated. I ask if there are any kids that want to come forward for a children's message. You got one coming up from back there. Come on. Got a couple? Come on. just for what they wanted. But also, sometimes people came because they listened to what he said and watched what he did 
they believed that he was someone very special. Now, I'm not going to ask you if you think Jesus is special. I'm going to believe that you think that because you're here. Okay? But Jesus was very special. Not only did he heal people, but he taught them. He preached them messages and sermons like I'm doing to you. Okay? And he made, went out of his way to forgive people of their sins and to make them happy. And that's a good thing, right? Okay. So remember when you're following somebody else, that people follow Jesus. And when people start following you, remember it's a really strong responsibility because you don't want to lead them in the wrong direction, right? Yeah. Then there's something you want to have to That happens. That's correct. And you don't want to follow those people, right? And you don't. And you don't want to be like that's exactly right. You want people to follow you to follow you for the right reasons and to have good things happen. Uh, well, thank you for coming up. Thank you. sermon that my mind goes in odd directions. And I end up putting together what's called a narrative sermon, which means it's a sermon where I talk from the perspective of somebody else. And so what I am going to tell you is that I am going to be Jarvis today. And that's if you all allow me to be that today. At the time when I first set out to meet Jesus, I was a leader of my community synagogue. I will never forget that day. My daughter was at the point of death. She was barely breathing. She would not even open her eyes. I had told my wife that I had heard of the man of God, Jesus, the teacher, who was credited by many people with a variety of healings, miracles, but who we had been warned by the high priests to have no dealings with. The high priest believed him to be a false teacher. I went with all my heart to get help for my daughter, and yet I knew that to go to Jesus meant going against the leader of our Jewish faith. I told my wife all of this. But how could someone not of God miraculously heal so many people? God, I had to include, conclude, must be with him. And so I decided that I must go to find help from him. So out I went to find Jesus. When I found him, he was surrounded by a large group of people. Some I recognized from my synagogue. For me to ask Jesus for help would be to open myself up to the criticism of these members and to risk my standing in the synagogue. But of course, those in the crowd were not exactly moving away from Jesus themselves. They were listening to his words intensely. They were defying the high priest also. At that moment, though, none of that mattered. I couldn't wait. My daughter couldn't wait. She was dying. I could not let my standing in the synagogue keep me from addressing my daughter's needs. I went to Jesus. I got down on my knees. And I begged him. I begged him to heal my daughter. I asked him to come to my home and heal her. And he agreed. My relief was overwhelmed. But when we get there, it's 
time. Then a woman came up to Jesus and touched his robe. And she was healed. It was all that I could do to stop myself from yelling. Jesus noticed. And he stopped. He stopped the question who had touched him. Here we lost my patience. The crowd had been pressing in on all of us. Lots of people were touching Jesus' cloak. Even his disciples told him so. But he stopped there. All I could see was my daughter's face becoming ashen and her body turning cold. I'm sorry. I understand that the woman had endured great suffering. And I was happy that she had been healed. My daughter didn't have that much time. And Jesus didn't seem concerned. He began talking with her. Jesus told her that her faith had made her well. I kept thinking, Jesus, you have to hurry. Please hurry. And then my worst fears were realized. Some people came from my home to tell me not to bother the teacher any longer. My daughter was dead. I was overcome with grief. I was angry, angry at the woman, angry at Jesus, angry at the delay. But Jesus heard the messenger as well. And Jesus turned to me and told me not to fear, to only believe. And this strength the question. All I wanted was my daughter to be well. I had to leave. At that point, Jesus sent away the crowd. And when we continued to my house, it was just Jesus, myself, and three of his disciples, who I would later learn to be Peter, James, and John. There was something about Jesus that gave me hope. He moved forward without even a hint of hesitation. No doubt. I wanted so much to believe. Maybe I did believe a little. Jesus surely moved with confidence. When we got to my house, seeing the people everywhere weeping and wailing loudly, I wanted to grieve with them, cry with them, But if there was to be any hope, I needed to hold myself together. And then Jesus told the mourners that my daughter was just sleeping. They laughed at him as he put him outside. And then Jesus, my wife, and I, and the three disciples alone, went into where my daughter was. Nothing mattered. Not my standing in the synagogue. Not the feelings of the mourners. Not the world around me. All that disappeared. Nothing mattered but what Jesus would do. My wife and our daughter. With no fanfare, Jesus went up to our daughter held her hand, and said, to love the come. Jesus told her simply to get up, and she did. She got up and started to walk around, and my wife and I looked at each other, and we hugged each other, and we reached out to our daughter. We held her as we never did before. Her fever was gone. Her eyes were clear. She felt ready to go out and to play with her friends.
friends, ready to do our chores around the house. I fell again to my knees, tears in my eyes. I praised God. I thanked Jesus. Kissing his hand and expressing my thanks again and again. As low as I had felt moments before, I now felt as though I could walk above the clouds. And then, Jesus told us something strange. He told us to tell no one what had happened. How? But then I thought, Jesus did say that she was asleep. I'll just have to tell people that she was asleep and he woke her from sleep. But I knew. I knew that there was much more to what had happened than Jesus just waking up our sleeping daughter. As Jesus told me, I said nothing to anyone other than Jesus woke my daughter from her deep sleep. The high priest was told about my disobedience. How I had reached out to Jesus. And I lost much of my stature in the synagogue. It didn't matter. My daughter was well. Our family was at peace. At least that is until after Jesus was arrested by the high priest and his men. And then we saw that he was treated poorly, that he was handed over to Rome, where he was whipped, crucified, and he died. And when I heard it said that Jesus had been raised from the dead, I wasn't surprised. It was my belief that it was only right. God should reward him. He of all people deserved it. I could no longer hold my tongue. How could such a loving teacher of God be treated with such contempt? I needed to tell everyone the whole story of my daughter's healing. I guess that is how my family's story turned up in your words of scripture. I'm glad the story is still told today. Jesus, I learned, was much more than a loving teacher who healed the sick and raised my daughter back to life. Peter, James, and John, I heard, taught that Jesus was God's Son, that He died for the forgiveness of our sins, that we were to put our trust in Jesus for our salvation. And I believe them. I was expelled from my synagogue for, the, for my teachings, for teaching what I believed then about Jesus. What I saw Jesus do with my very own eyes, how he healed my daughter, and for sharing what I learned from Peter, James, and John. Jesus was, Jesus is the Messiah of God, God's Son, the Savior of all who will receive Jesus and his promises. I'm here today to confirm what I believe you already believe, and also to remind you that following Jesus is not about success in the world or power in the world. 
is about sharing Jesus' message of love. It is about actually reaching out and loving others, loving our neighbors, loving our enemies. It is about caring for the weakest, the us, the sick, and the stranger. Rejoice in the knowledge that Jesus has sent his Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to be with you. Rejoice that Jesus suffered and died so that your sins may be forgiven and you may be saved. And rejoice in the wonder and love of God the Father. Have faith. Trust in the Lord. Let me finish by telling you this. As I was not disappointed when I put my faith in Jesus, you will not be disappointed when you put your faith fully in Jesus. Amen. Amen. of gifts. Sustain those among us who feel they are not valued. Open our hearts to the wondrous breath of all who call upon your name. In your mercy. Amen. 
God of creation, your goodness abounds. Multiply the fruits of the earth and rescue it from our wastefulness. In your mercy, God of justice, you reign in steadfast love. Bring peace between nations ravaged by war or strife. And illumine paths of justice and freedom for those who lead them. We pray for immigrants and refugees and for all who work with them. In your mercy. God of compassion, your touch brings healing and your world revives us for life. Hear our prayers for all who are in need, and for doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers who provide care to them. Turn wailing into dancing and weeping into joy. In your mercy. God of community, you gather us at your table of plenty. Where there is hunger among us, open our hands. Where we are indifferent, to the needs of others, open our hearts. In your mercy. God of the ages, great is your faithfulness. We remember in thanksgiving our beloved dead, and with all the saints sing without ceasing in your realm of glory. In your mercy. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share the peace. We thank you for your continuing faithfulness in giving generously and take the time here and now to lift up God's goodness and all God's good gifts. Offerings may be made through the offering plate at the head of the aisle, by mail, or electronically including the online giving platform tithe.ly. We thank you for supporting our mission, our community outreach, and the mission of the larger Lutheran Church. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you give us your very self and call us to share our gifts. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us with your grace. Make us to be your body for the life of the world. Your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. From sunrise to sunset, the day is holy, for Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with you, your gathered people, and unfolds us with your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And, th and through the night will overtake this day, the night will overtake this day. You summon us to live in endless light, the never ceasing Sabbath of the Lord, and so with choirs of angels, with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise.
night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. And before we begin with the music, I do want to also invite those who are online to get their bread and their wine. And so I say to them first, take and eat the body of Christ given for you. And take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Now.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherd and God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our sending hymn, we've changed it. Our sending hymn will be in the blue book, number 650. We are marching to the light of God. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.